Have you ever wondered why airplanes don't just fall out of the sky, or how submarines efficiently glide through water? These seemingly magical phenomena can be explained by understanding the concept of flow separation and control mechanisms. Flow separation is a natural phenomenon that happens when a fluid, be it air or water, flows over a body. Due to the fluid's inertia, there comes a point where it separates from the body, creating a wake or turbulent flow. This is what happens when you see an airplane leaving a trail in the sky, or when a boat forms a wake as it moves through water. But what if we could control this separation? What if we could minimize its effects? That's where control mechanisms come in. These are strategies used in various engineering applications to tame the effects of flow separation, allowing for smoother and more efficient movement of objects through fluids. So in essence, flow separation and control mechanisms are core concepts that help us understand and manipulate how objects move through fluids. Flow separation sounds pretty complex, doesn't it? But in truth, it's a concept that's fairly easy to grasp. Imagine you're pouring syrup onto a stack of pancakes. You'd notice the syrup slides down the stack following the contour of the pancakes. This is what we'd call a flow. But as the syrup reaches the plate, it spreads out, losing that smooth, streamlined direction. This disruption, this break in flow, is what we call flow separation. In technical terms, flow separation occurs when the boundary layer velocity reduces to zero or even reverses direction. Now, I know what you're thinking, boundary layer? Well, think of it as a thin layer of fluid that's sticking to the surface of an object. In our pancake example, the syrup sticking to the pancakes would be the boundary layer. Flow separation is a natural occurrence. It happens every time a fluid like air or water moves over a surface. When the fluid encounters a change in the shape of the surface, it can cause the fluid to separate from the surface. This separation can result in a loss of lift and an increase in pressure drag. Now, why should we care about lift and drag? Well, if you're designing an airplane or a ship, you'd want to minimize drag and maximize lift. Too much drag slows things down and too little lift. Well, let's just say your airplane won't be taking off anytime soon. So you see, while flow separation might be a fascinating natural phenomenon, it's not always a desired one in the world of engineering. Engineers are constantly devising ways to delay or control flow separation to improve the efficiency of our vehicles and vessels. In our next scene, we'll delve into these control mechanisms. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate the complexity of flow, the simple act of fluid moving over a surface, and the profound impact it has on the world around us. So while flow separation is a natural occurrence, it's not always a desired one especially when it comes to engineering applications. Now that we understand flow separation, let's tackle the other half of the equation, control mechanisms. Control mechanisms are the unsung heroes of the engineering world, working behind the scenes to ensure the smooth operation of our machines, vehicles, and even the flow of air around structures. But what are these mechanisms exactly? Picture yourself on a breezy day, standing next to a stream. You place a small twig in the water and watch as it gets swept along by the current. Suddenly it hits a rock and spins around, caught in a whirlpool, before it's finally spit out and continues downstream. That's flow separation in action. Now imagine if you could control that whirlpool, guiding the twig smoothly around the rock without any turbulence. That's what control mechanisms aim to achieve. Engineers use a variety of control mechanisms to delay or prevent flow separation each tailored to the specific application. For instance, in the case of an airplane wing, engineers might employ vortex generators, tiny devices that create vortices to energize the boundary layer and prevent separation. In a pipe system, they might use a different set of tools, like flow straighteners, to ensure the fluid flows smoothly and efficiently. The key here is that control mechanisms are all about manipulating the behavior of the boundary layer, that thin layer of fluid or air that's in direct contact with a surface. By controlling the boundary layer, engineers can prevent or delay flow separation, improving the efficiency of their designs. Control mechanisms might seem simple, but they're a product of complex calculations and precise engineering. They're an essential part of our world, from the cars we drive to the planes we fly in, and even the buildings we live and work in. So in a way, Control mechanisms are the heroes of the story. 
helping engineers overcome the challenges posed by flow separation.